what's Irish and stays out all night? What? Patty O Furniture. Oh. 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 Cooney goes into a bar and orders a succession of martinis. And after each one, remove the olive and put it in a jar. After two hours of this, the bartender felt compelled to ask, Why do you keep on doing that? Because, slurred Cooney, my wife sent me out for a jar of olives. <laughs> After a time, Cooney finally staggered out of the pub with McCarthy close behind. McCarthy crossed the street while Cooney stumbled into the subway entrance. When McCarthy reached the other side, he saw Cooney emerging from the subway stairs. Where you been, slurred McCarthy. Don't know, says Cooney, but you should see the train set that guy has in his basement. <laughs> <laughs> you know how the Irish jig got started? Lots of beer, too few washrooms. <laughs> Despite the drink, the Irish are known to be a religious lot. Mrs. O'Leary is at church every Sunday with her wee daughters. The one Sunday little Margaret Mary, the youngest, asked her mom why the people always thank God for making church so fast when really it seemed to take a rather long time. Mrs. O'Leary was somewhat confused by the remark, so she asked little Maggie, why do you think people are expressing thank yous that Mass is over so quickly? Well, explains the little one, every time we say prayers, the people always say, thanks, speedy God. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't go to church, you don't get that, eh? <laughs> Kevin is kneeling in the confessional. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned, he says. You have to help me, Father McBella. He says, I've been stealing things and I can't seem to stop. Do you make a habit of saying morning prayers every day, asks Father McBella. No, I'm sorry to say I do not, confesses Kevin. Well, there's your problem right there, my son, counsels Father McBella. From now on, start each day with an Our Father, a Hail Mary, and a Glory Be. Are you saying if I do that, Father, I won't be up to stealing anymore, asks Kevin. You might help, says Father McBella. It's worth a try, isn't it? Well, what if it doesn't work, says Kev. Then get me a couple of cases of Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> it was a busy night in the confessional for Father McBella. Mike goes into the confessional, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I have been with a loose woman. Father McBella, heaven forbid. Who was it? Was it Mary O'Malley? No, Father. Was it Bernadette Cassidy? No, Father. Was it Sheila Burney? No, Father. Was it Angelo Flaherty? No, Father. Then was it Teresa McKenna? No, Father. A few minutes later, Mike emerges from the confessional box, and there waiting his turn is his good friend Seamus Muldoon. What did you get? asked Seamus. For our fathers, five Hail Marys and six good leads. <laughs> Why did St. Patrick drive all the snakes out of Ireland? Why? He couldn't afford the airfare. <laughs> Obviously. Okay, so a priest, a minister, and a rabbi were playing poker when the police raided the game. The policeman asked the priest, Father, were you gambling? Of course not, the priest replies after saying a silent prayer for forgiveness. Pastor, what about you, the officer asks. After an appeal to heaven, the minister answers, no, sir. Turning to the rabbi, the officer says, Rabbi, tell the truth, were you gambling? Shrugging his shoulders, the rabbi replies, with whom?
O'Brien, his wife and nine children are waiting to catch a bus to go to Sunday Mass. By and by, a blind man comes along to the bus stop. When the bus comes, it's overloaded. Only Mrs. O'Brien and the nine kids are able to get on. So O'Brien and the blind man decide to walk. At first, all goes well as they trade quips back and forth. Do you know what an Irish windbreaker is? asks the blind man. A jacket? asks O'Brien. No, laughs the blind man. O'Brien gives in. Okay, tell me, what is an Irish windbreaker? An Irishman who ate too much cabbage and corned beef. <laughs> now O'Brien takes a turn. Why can't you borrow money from a leprechaun? Why, says the blind man. They're always a little short. <laughs> on it goes until after a while O'Brien gets irritated by the constant ticking of the stick on the, of the blind man as he taps it on the sidewalk and he says to him, why don't you put a piece of rubber at the end of your stick? That ticking sound is starting to drive me crazy. To which the blind man replies, if you would have put a rubber at the end of your stick, we'd be riding the bus, so shut the hell up. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> the doctor was explaining to Murphy how nature adjusts certain physical conditions to compensate for others. For example, if a man is blind, he develops a keen sense of hearing or touch. If he's stone deaf, he develops other senses, the doctor explains. I know just what you mean, says Murphy. I have noticed that if a bloke has one short leg, then the other one is always a bit longer. <laughs> no matter what you think about the Irish, one thing is for sure, the Irish love to have a good time. Like Finnegan. Finnegan goes into the local pet store and asks, do you sell budgies in here? To be sure, to be sure we do, says the clerk. How many you got? asks Finnegan. Ninety-nine. I'll take all ninety-nine of them, says Finnegan. He pays for them, leaves and goes up the street to the tailor shop. He gets the tailor to sew 99 pockets in his jacket. And he puts a budgie in each one of the pockets. Out he goes to the high rise next door, takes the elevator to the top floor and climbs out onto the roof and he jumps off. Splat! He hits the ground and lays there moaning and a groaning. A passerby comes upon poor Finnegan and asks, Are you alright, man? What happened to you? I don't know, says Finnegan, but that's the last time I tried that budgie jumping. <laughs> you know how to tell? Do you know how to tell if an Irishman is having a good time? How? He's doubling with laughter. Oh. So I hope you've had a few laughs tonight. Happy St. Patrick's Day.